Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we are revisiting a property that I think I showed on the channel a bit of time ago. It's where we've had some flood damage. There's basically been a tank that's ruptured in an upstairs cupboard. It's spread through the entire building and got into all kinds of electrical bits and pieces. We're here to swap over some of those circuit accessories and a Valiant heating controller that Matthew is going to be doing. He's here with me. And also there is an old Legrand consumer unit that is in a former garage. So it's a garage that's been converted. Basically ended up getting plasterboarded around that Legrand board. It's a steel framed wall, so it is sat forward. We do have some depth to play with off the original block surface. And we're gonna install a recessed fuse box board. And I'll show you that as the primary bit of content in this video, so you can see how that comes out. I wanna do a big shout out to Col Dixon and his son, Corey. Cole has just taken on Corey as his electrical apprentice and I've been out to visit them this week. Pop a little picture of that up here. Um, and it's great to see somebody who is keen, determined and motivated and really wants to be an electrician and equally somebody who wants them to train to be that. Um, it's a powerful combination. It's not enough we see all of across the trades to be honest. And it's how it always used to be. And it was brilliant to meet Corey and see how he is really, really focused on being an electrician of the future. Also aspirations to grow and develop his dad's business, which is nice. I can speak firsthand in my experience how that is definitely something that can happen as family businesses grow, um, having Matthew and Nathan in my team. So yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. And it refocused my mind a little bit because sometimes you can get bogged down in these discussions and debates with older farts like me in the industry who are criticizing the industry bodies, the card schemes, the CPSs, everything that's happened over the last 10 or 15 years and you can lose sight of what is important. We are the people inspiring the next generation. We're the people who needs to be teaching them. And that is something that I think we should promote and support more of. Those youngsters don't wanna hear about all that. They just wanna learn from the people who walk the walk before them and um, grow to have a fantastic career for the future. Of course, I can't transform an entire industry based on that mindset alone, but I can impact people in my network by being that, by doing that myself. And that's something I'm focused on. I wanna stop all of this nonsense negative mindset that some people seem obsessed with. And I think it's just to grow an industry personality and brand for themselves and really focusing on the core issue. And that's on positively engaging and supporting those young people who desperately want to be electricians in the future. Anyway, let's move on with this. I shall show you the work in action. We'll get a little bit of footage of Matthew as well, whether he likes it or not. Catch up with you in a sec. So we've got this old Legrand board to swap. This used to be a garage, as I said on an earlier video, and um, we're gonna stick a fuse box board in. I'm gonna try and recess it. Obviously we're stuck to the depth of the block. So we'll have to have a look at that and see what we can make of it. Not a lot of circuits going on in here. So you've got a couple of rings, cooker, immersion, shed, and a couple of light circuits. Reasonable length on the cables. Let's see how we can make this turn out. So that's its first loose fix all done. You can see we've still got to test all this and obviously neaten it up just a little bit, but we've got the tails coming in with the air through the same slot in the back. All the neutrals are in the right order. Airs are in the right order, just a bit of labeling. Obviously we've got the lights and then a shed supply, cooker, a couple of socket rings and an immersion. And yeah, just need to test through all this now, pop it back together and I'll show you that in a sec. So this is the Valiant heater, Matthew, heater controller center, if you like, wiring center, that Matthew's been here replacing. It was down here under these lats, no access to it. It got absolutely soaked when this tank ruptured. So he's moved it up here, got all our wires nicely dressed and clamped in, and um, neat tidy job, I'd say. I'll have a quick pop of the lid off and I'll show you what it looks like inside. So there you go, you can see it all wired up. They come with these little pin terminals that you can wire onto the ends of the leads and then pop them in. You can see Matthew's had to reposition a few bits of stuff that was off here up to there. We're now just running through some live tests on it to make sure it's all switching properly. That's one of the things you will have to do with heating systems. If you want to verify that they're actually operating in the correct way, usually it's going to involve elements of accessing live parts. So again, PPE, gloves, glasses, make sure you're working safely. GS38 probes and um, verify your heating system. So you can see we're all labelled up now. We've got our circuits identified. We've got a bit of cork to seal around this. Point of note, if you are using the fuse box recess kit, you need to leave a little lip sticking forward on your 
base to the consumer unit so the front cover will fasten and keep these properly in the right place. If you set it flush to the wall, it won't quite go back right, so remember that. And then yeah, it's tidied up quite nicely. Cork's just gone in, there's been a gonna be full redecoration in this room as you'll see. There's plans and colour plans and whatnot. Matthew's just sorting light switch out over there. And um that's us signed off on that one. We'll have a little chat about what we've done in a minute. Okay, so I'm back at the office now and I'm just producing the paperwork on that job you've seen us installing. Just a quick mention about the um, putting of circuit breakers together or RCBOs in this case and sometimes how you would have to derate them. Um, there's been videos I've shared before on this. Uh, I'd say probably a couple of years ago there was a big craze on social media of people putting all of their RCBOs with a blank in between. And while there's nothing wrong with that, it's not going to do any harm, it wasn't needed in 99% of cases on domestic installations. Unfortunately, there had been a video shared by somebody else on YouTube which really didn't get the facts of the matter quite right. As is the case, sometimes we all make mistakes. And yeah, it's just to, to revisit that because there is obviously a change in how some of these domestic consumer units are now being used. You're going to have SOS heat pumps, EV charge points, other high load appliances running through the circuit breakers or RCBOs. So there might be a case where you would have to factor in the rating of them because of that or putting some space in between to try and allow them to dissipate heat a little bit more easily. Um, the the derating factor to do with that applies when you have um, the RCBOs in this case would be rated towards their maximum value and under that usage for over 30 minutes at a time or when the off period isn't as long as the on period. The manufacturers state different things in their instructions so it's well worth checking to make sure you get that right and that's just to try and deal with you know the thermal effects of them being next to each other whilst they're operating at the capacity of the protected device for a longer period of time it makes sense when you think about it but in a typical domestic setting it's only really going to be the case if you've got an immersion heater or an SOS heat pump or an EV charge point or something like that and on this install as you saw today there really wasn't anything that was going to be drawing anything like the maximum rating of those RCBOs and very very unlikely for that to be the case for more than half an hour so we didn't have to factor any of that in there would be um, another side issue to do with the ambient temperatures and this can be the buildup of heat within an enclosure due to the protective devices again at a domestic level it's unlikely to really affect things that dramatically because you've got the metal flap on the front there's usually gaps for air to circulate through the enclosure in some way and with that one i've installed today it wasn't going to be a factor again room temperature would di dictate the temperature within that enclosure but certainly if you're in a warm plant room something to consider if there's a potential for the ambient temperature to rise towards 60 degrees celsius for example you know it's going to be a bit sweaty and warm in there and there'll be other issues at play because of that but you would also need to think about potentially adjusting your cable sizes and protective devices because of that so for example a 40 amp circuit breaker might start operating at 36 to 38 amps instead so you could have in that case what people would term nuisance tripping if you're specking your rcbos or overcome protective devices towards the limit of what the circuit would be drawing. It's unusual to approach design like that, but not impossible. More worryingly is when people put these in unheated spaces. So if you're putting them in sheds or external meter cabinets, you can have that 40 amp um, circuit breaker where its characteristics would shift upwards. So it wouldn't then start operating until maybe 44, 45 amps. And obviously if your cable isn't rated for that and there's an issue in the circuit, that can cause you a problem. So something to keep in the back of your mind. More an issue for cold and heated spaces. And there's loads of information about this. I'll drop a link in the comments description of my video so you can go off and check it out. There's been an article produced by Wiring Matters, which is an IET initiative. And there's some really good information on there. And as I say, if you're viewing content on YouTube, be really careful that it's got the accuracy in there because it can start these things off which it just snowballs. Um, and, and no disrespect to the person who produced that content. It's one of those things, we all make mistakes. I'm sure there's loads of them on my channel. You know, we own it and move on at the end of the day. If you look here, you can see I'm producing my certificate now. For some reason, the flash is on, so I'm just working through that. I've actually mast mastered this one. I'm just checking it as a final check before I email it off to the client. Um, and yeah, that's that one wrapped up. Matthew did the wiring centre. He said there was no real issues with that. It was a valiant one, really simple to set up. He quite enjoyed doing it. It was just a straight swap for one that was already in place. 
but with the added difficulty of having to move its location and apparently they'd updated the connectors from the first version to the one we fitted so you had to rewire all those as well but yeah otherwise thank you for watching this video let me know what you think in the comments give it a thumbs up or thumbs down and we will see you on the next one